to tell you, uh, first of all, I just recently saw you on the tour with Extreme. Uh, you okay. guys came to Arizona and played the Van Buren? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen you guys live before. Holy cow, you guys blew me away. I couldn't believe it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, especially like the part where you kind of, you broke down in the middle and just kind of jammed. I think you played like Prince or some covers. It was so cool. Right, 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 right. yeah, yeah. You guys great. do that every show? Pretty much. Yeah. 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 And I think, did you have a, uh, you either had a sub, it was either a sub bass player or a drummer, but it, everyone yeah, it was, sounded amazing. It different, we had a drummer, Biscuit, showed up for that show, yeah. Um, he was, uh, Will had other commitments, so he had to, he was not around for a bit. Yeah, it's amazing how tight you guys sound, I mean, been playing together for so long, and just the musicianship, and especially I'm always amazed by singers that can still sing, you know, like, because some singers they lose some of the octaves and the voice you were just killing it i was i was blown away yeah well we do you know the, the more it, it's about working you got to keep working yeah well it sounded amazing i highly recommend anybody to see even if they're just a casual fan go see living color or it, with you with this new project sonic universe and uh, they'll mm. be blown away i'm sure yes well, yeah it is something to see mike orlando do his thing yeah, Mike Orlando is amazing. This new project is awesome. Will you guys be doing live shows at Sonic Universe? Eventually, yeah. As soon as uh, like I, I'm out with Living Color right now, but when we when this is done, I'm going to try to get some get some uh, Sonic Universe shows in. Like a full tour, or just like a handful? We don't know yet. We'll see okay. what happens as, as we go along. Yeah, maybe you could get on to another tour. Isn't that kind of sometimes a good strategy? Usually, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's talk about it. So explain to my audience, this all started on the shipwreck cruise. You kind of jammed, and then you thought, uh, oh, maybe we should make a band out of this. It was a ship rock. Um, basically, we, uh, I was there. I saw him play. I was very I was blown away by his playing. Um, we, got, uh, we got together after the ship rock cruise and uh, started writing and recording music, and it, was, and it worked. So we were very happy with it, and we kept going. Did he write a lot of the music and you wrote the lyrics or do you write some of the music? Basically. He wrote okay. the music. I wrote the lyrics. Yeah. Okay. So what inspires you lyrically? Um, is it just like books that you've read, your life experience, nature, art, or all those things? Or It's usually life experience, you know, um, some, some things sort of hit you differently than you expected it to. And certain, certain things make you, uh, make you think about things very differently. Um, or your reaction to things sometimes surprise you. So you have to write about those, you know, give me an example of like your reaction hitting you differently than you expected. You know, there's a song on this record called life and it's, you know, life can take you around, it take, can take you around a, a, a really a different place than you expected it to be. Um, you can, and basically your saying is that sometimes you have to persevere no matter what. You have to keep going no matter what life gives you. Um, the point is to live. Yeah, you know? no, that's exactly right. I mean, did you have tough times throughout your career? Um, because, I mean, you had such er early success with Living Color. You won a couple of Grammys. And then there was a time where the music scene kind of changed. And then did that make you think of giving up? No, I mean, there have been times when... The doing this didn't wasn't as satisfying as i'd like it liked it to be sometimes doing this would sometimes put you in predicaments that you didn't want to be in you know um a lot of things a, a lot of things didn't go as planned you know relationships that you thought were going to last forever didn't um places that you thought you were going to be by a certain point in your life you didn't get you didn't reach those goals so you had to you have to adjust to make things work Really, where did you, uh, I mean, because you've had such an amazing level of success. Like I said, I mean, just the two Grammys alone, but I mean, touring with Rolling Stones, and mm -hmm. you've done a lot of amazing things that other musicians would kill for, but you feel like you have a, there's things that you wanted to achieve that you didn't? Well, yeah, it's it's hard when those things are in your, or, 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 or you have a lot to look forward to when things look so, so great, you know? Yeah, we played with the Rolling Stones. What do you do after that? You go on, um, you, you've won a Grammy. What's next after the Grammy? 
what do you what goals can you set for yourself that make sense you know what goals can you set for yourself and achieve them that will give you any satisfaction in your life you know i you know i i unfortunately you know my marriage did not last as long but i have to look at the bright side on, on that you know i have two beautiful sons that i that i that i can rely on you know um sometimes working the people that you're very familiar with will you have to deal with their their idiosync idiosyncrasies and your own and that can become somewhat difficult it's like a relation any kind of relationship there's always that kind of thing that you have to deal with um uh and it can take you through the ringer sometimes you know so how what is your advice to other bands or just people in general that are in relationships how do you deal with those idiosyncrasies how do you persevere through all that that the goal is not to 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 remain it is to sustain um i don't know if that makes any sense if, if it doesn't work it doesn't work but does it shouldn't take you you shouldn't become morose and the rest of the world does not work for you because of one one little setback you have to keep going you know the 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 goal is to get better from everything that happens to you yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's amazing listening to you guys play and living color. And then this new project, it does sound like you're getting better, which is crazy. But I, I, I do think that musicians can get better. That's what's so hard is like the music business is they'll say like, Oh, you have this five-year window or whatever, but I'm like a lot of bands right. put out their best stuff later. Yeah. I, you know, um, we are a society obsessed with youth and what's new um, and what's next uh so it it's a that's a difficult place to be in when you've been doing this for over 30 years you know um i don't think i, I don't think the industry itself really recognizes people unless they are dead really you know it's <laughs> just true I mean, yeah. um, how how many new uh records from people that we haven't heard from in a very long time have you have, have come out posthumously um and their appreciation for them it wasn't while they were alive but after the fact and i'm trying to make sure that that my now is just as important as my past is yeah well i love it i love this new stuff sonic universe i mean there's not a bad song on the record they're all great talk about um the song my desire because that almost yeah. has like a rage against the machine riff and is, mm -hmm. I wonder what that song was about. Is it about a woman? Is it about a drug? Is it about food? What, what is the desire? It, any desire. It could be any one of those desires. Um, and it, it desire is, is your ability to not let something go. Obsession is that, is that idea desire. You can desire something for the live long day, but obsession over that, an obsession of, of possessing those sort of things is uh, is is a problem. I'm trying, I'm I'm trying to. The character that's in the song is trying to to toe the line and find some sort of balance between desire and obsession. Oh, that's that's really deep. Yeah, because it's true. Like some desire is good, like wanting to mm. be better and all those things. But then when it becomes an obsession, it can become unhealthy. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's a good one. Um, the song, uh, it is what it is. That's like a fast paced banger. Like, I love the drums, the bass. It's like exploding into your speaker. It's got a cool Absolutely. and the guitar solo. Uh, where did you find this drummer? He's he's like awesome. I love him. Taekwon is from uh, uh, I, I know him from a band uh, Sworn Enemy. It's a metalcore band called Sworn right. Enemy. Um, I, I love them. Um, hit him and. Uh, his his guitar player Jeff uh, is a good friend of mine, and you know I just love the way that Taekwon plays drums. You know, yeah, so fast. So you're this was cool too about you is I, I like I've heard you talk about you're listening to new music because you'd be surprised how many musicians I interview that they say I don't listen to, to they either don't listen to music at all or they don't listen to any new music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I try to listen to as much new music as I possibly can. 
um what was the name of the band that uh i was told about that i actually t- checked out and i thought that was really good uh hold on i'll tell you in a second if uh talk about hero uh hiro the hero he's really good too it was amazing uh hold on a second <laughs> what this thing i'm i'm curious yeah because I, I i i can hear the the more modern influences on this record and i think that's exciting rather than just doing a retro record which is also cool but it's cool to hear modern uh a modern take on music yeah hyrule the hero is really cool uh uh sleep token i heard the other day i'm really into that um you know I listen to, to a bunch of things. I try, at least I try to. Sleep to often. What kind of music is it? It's a metal band, but it's 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 kind of heavy, but it's it's good. Yeah. Um. Talk about the song. Uh, also, another good one on this record is "My Desire." Or sorry, not "My Desire." That was one we just talked about. Higher. That was the other one. I want to ask you about that because yeah. that's uh, you know, you got the lyrics. You got to climb higher, higher if you want to fly. Spread your wings and fly. I mean, that's a very broad lyric but what is that what are you talking about it's, with that? it's just perseverance you cannot stop um you know there, there's always something on the horizon that's bad and your ability to rise above that is it is your challenge in life is to get better as i said before is to get better and, and to get higher no matter how whatever that is you if uh you could take it any way you want to but it really it's about getting more information the more information the better you become particularly if you can use that information yeah how does that work though because i i hear i listen to a lot of like self-help stuff and all that and, and they always mm-hmm. talk about gratitude you got to be grateful but then i feel like if you're just grateful for what you have then how are you ever going to get better and persevere like it's almost like you said like that you got to have some desire to get better but then i guess maybe if it becomes an obsession then it becomes unhealthy Right. You know, I've I, I've had quite the career, obviously. And I think that my but at the same time, I think my career could be a, a lot better. I could have done a lot more things. I can still do a lot more things, but I have to be happy with what I have. I have to be grateful for what I've done. And because I've done what I've done can be can be considerable. But I and there is much more to do. Um but I just have to keep persevering and be grateful that I got to this point in my life, you know, despite the setbacks, despite the, the, the accolades, despite all this stuff, I'm still a human being that's trying to get better at what I am. Yeah. What, what else is left on your bucket list to do or to achieve that you haven't already? Um, I'd like to go back to the theater and do more, do more musical stuff and, and to do some even do some straight acting, actually. Yeah, because you was it Jesus Christ stu- superstar that really like inspired you to do both music and acting. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then I got a chance to work with Ted Neely, uh, who was in the movie Jesus Christ Superstar, which was amazing. Was it was an amazing sort of thing. So yeah, I, there's a m- lot more Broadway stuff I'd like to do, and a lot more theater things I'd like to get into. Are you n- near New York? Could you audition for that kind of I stuff? Am New York, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the, I I think you'd be amazing in in those kinds of roles. I know, like Sebastian Bach. You know, he did uh, some of those uh, Broadway plays and stuff, and he was screaming <laughs> he and belting it out. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what about any more uh, film acting for those? Because for those people who don't know, I mean, you were in the movie Platoon. You've done some indie oh. movies as well. And. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I'd love to do any of that stuff. Yeah, I'd like to go back to my get back into my whole. Uh, acting thing yeah but the musical thing makes the most sense for you because of your voice abilities i mean that's like a tool that i feel like is not a lot of people can can sing like you well it's good isn't it? i think that's good i think it's a good thing you know it keeps me working you know right yeah like the song uh, on the new record that whisper to a scream that's cool that's got like almost like a hendrix stevie ray vaughn guitar vibe but mm-hmm. you're belting out the 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 song like there's some emotion in that one. What is that one about? Um, it's, it's it's plain and simple. It's about me not living up to my potential, you know, not being able to that despite whatever's going on in my life, my mind will sometimes 
distract me in ways that make make me not and put not put me in my best place you know um and if i could if i could get past some of that stuff and get out of my own way basically is what that is that i can go from you know just go from a quiet place to a very loud place but uh, but again to keep your ideas and your goals in life simple move forward forward moving always sort of moving in a direction yeah what is what is your vice like what what distracts you the most because I, I i didn't know living color they weren't uh, you guys weren't like a big party band or anything were you no um but you know i distractions are everywhere you know um i'm not much of a drinker i uh, uh drugs don't don't do anything for me um but apathy is a it is something that you do, you know, sit to, to sit in front of a television and just watch the world go by on TV. Uh, the internet is a major, major distraction um, for many people, including myself. So there's, there are lots of things that, that are, are not as good for me as I'd like it to be. Do you try to set like habits for yourself? Like you're going to write music every day or journal or, or uh, practice singing, or, or there's certain things that you try to do every day, or, or no, no. I, it's it, to I don't have a real routine. I, I know I things I have the things I have to do, the things I'd like to do, but I know that thing, there's always something for me to do in any given point of the day. Um, I'm home right now, so I know that you know cleaning is a is a major thing that has to be done at some point in here. And I will get to it, but you know, I have other things on my plate as well. Yeah. That, it's, it's crazy. Like, you know, people like, I just remember being a kid and like, you know, you look up to these rock stars and you think everything is so perfect. And then you start talking to them and it's like, you know, they're just regular people. You guys are regular people. You have to clean your house too. And you, you know, you have, mm -hmm. fears and you know, it's all these things that, uh, yeah. you're just normal people. I've yeah, bills and all kinds of stuff I got to take care of. Yeah. Right. And even like Mick Jagger, who, you know, you worked with, you toured with, and you got to mm -hmm. watch him and how he works and stuff. Did you learn things from him about success and uh, and being a, a great musician? Um, you know, at the point at which ja we, were, we were on the road with them, they are obviously uh, established. They knew exactly who they were and what they were. And in order to maintain it, they did everything that they could to maintain it. You know, uh, I think Jagger had a really strict uh, exercise uh, regimen, uh, pretty strict diet, dietary sort of thing. He was very, he was very much on his grind, and I, and it was something to be admired when you watched it go down. Yeah, I just had a guy on a, who was a keyboard player, and they opened. Rolling Stones. And he said, uh, Mick Jagger was watching them side stage and he's always like observing everything, looking at the levels mm -hmm. and lights. And like, he's just right. like, in the zone all the time, which is crazy. Yeah, he's, you know, he's very well aware of, of what, what is necessary to make things work and will put, and, and knows how to put those into action. Yeah. And you've probably picked up on, on some of that. I mean, cause like I said, when I saw Living Color just recently on this tour, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. It's, it, it's, you know, you, you kind of have to learn a few things while you're doing it, while you're doing certain things. Um, and, you know, we've been doing it for a long time. So I'd hope we I'd, I'd hope we're getting it right. And I and I got to think some of that is just pure raw talent, because I could not do what any of you got. I can't play guitar. I can't sing like that. Like you guys have an amazing talent, too. You've harnessed. Yeah. 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 We've, we've tried to make. We've made best. We made do of what we have, and fortunately, we've been. It's been, it's been good, you know. Yeah, no, it's been amazing. Tell me about. Uh, I haven't heard you ever talk about this. Um, do you remember like when you guys did La La Palooza in ninety? Uh -huh. That's got to be one of the first ones of that uh, tour with Jane's Addiction and Nine Inch Nails. Do you have any memories of that? Hot. It was always hot. Because <laughs> it's summer, right? It was a summer tour. And the first show we did was in Arizona and it was like 106 degrees in the shade. It was just oppressively hot. Oh shit. Yeah. That's where I am now. I'm in Arizona. I would not recommend yeah. an outside tour here. I've seen a lot of bands outside in the summer and it's miserable. Yeah. 
it's a, it was, I had never, I'd never been that hot before in my life. Yeah. That's crazy that, that, yeah, you'd think that some of those, uh, summer shows in the, in the places would be indoors if it's a really, or the humidity in the South. I, I'm not a fan yeah. of it either. It was just ridiculously hot everywhere, everywhere, you know, summertime it's always hot. Did you guys think that like, cause when the music scene changed, I mean, people could have called you guys an eighties band, but then when the music scene changed, I felt like you guys could have leaned into that. Like you guys fit with that scene, the grunge and stuff better than some of the other bands that were full on glam. Uh, did, was there, were you thinking that you would have fit in better with like the Alice in Chains and stuff? Like I thought like that, uh, the stained, was that the album 93 you guys made? I love mm-hmm. the album. That's, I think it's so underrated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think uh, our what we were hearing and what we were dealing with was, you know, really a production issue. You know, we needed to, we wanted to hear, I wanted to, you know, they had to be more guitar heavy. It had to ha- be more groove oriented. And I think we try to, we try to do that on stage. Yeah. I mean, cause that, that, I think the song, leave it alone. I think that might be my favorite living color song. And I didn't realize it was actually nominated for a Grammy lost to plush by stone Temple right. pilots. But I mean, that might be one of my favorite songs that you guys ever did. I love it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love to hear it live too. Um, yeah. I know you got yeah. another one, another one. I'll let you go here soon. I want to ask you too about the, um, you guys did the in 2010 the Experience Hendrix tour. I, I'm mad at myself that I missed that because this sounds amazing. You had Joe Satriani, Eric mm-hmm. Johnson, Kenny Wayne Shepherd. I mean, it just sounds like an amazing fun. You just all was like covers of Hendrix, right? Yeah, all we did was Hendrix tunes. You know, we did one tour with with with, with uh, Steve Vai was was on the tour. That was fun. Um, Robert Randolph uh, was on. You know, electric slide guitar. Um, the guys from Double Trouble were there. It was a great band. It was a really good time. It was a lot of fun there. But no chance you'd ever do that again or do something similar to that? No one has ever, they haven't asked us back. You know, we we haven't been even considered in that regard. So I'd love, if someone would ask us back, we'll do it. What about like a, a version of that, like a like a Prince one? Because I never got to see Prince. Yeah, that'd be great. That Well, you know, the, the Revolution is out on the road with another singer. Um, oh, and really? doing shows yeah yeah so wendy and lisa and, and brown mark and and all those guys and dr fink they're all out there they're on the they've been on the road you should check it out it's like prince it's the revolution you oh okay oh uh, yeah i should check that out yeah because i think you guys i think you guys played a, a prince cover when you were jamming and stuff and it was, it was so awesome like it was, yeah we did uh nothing as to you it was it, it, it was just we started that right after sinead o'connor passed away um so we were it was an homage to our our, all of our fallen friends yeah that's great well um i know you're talking about a future living color record uh this sonic universe record is coming out soon it's out oh it's It's out out. okay yeah because i got to listen to it i've I've listened to the advanced copy and then you also have possibly i think that you talk about a documentary about the band coming up soon Mm -hmm. at at some point too yeah absolutely yeah which should Hopefully 2025 will have a bunch of stuff coming out, like a, a, a new record and maybe a, doc, a documentary about the band. Okay, awesome. And I'll look forward to uh, seeing Sonic Un- uh, Universe live if you guys come to Arizona. Hopefully Absolutely. in the summer, though. <laughs> Not in the summer, no. Sometime in a little cooler. Absolutely. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Corey. Thank you. All right. See you later. Bye-bye.